All right, <laughs> Shalom. This is the brother Bar from the GMS Salt, GMS West Palm Camp. And first, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah Bahasham Raka Kodash. I like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. I like to give salutations to the Akim preaching the gospel across the four corners of the earth in truth and in sincerity. Shalom, my God. Yo, Salakia Akim, man, like. I was setting up to do this nice little video first thing in the morning. You know, sun is out. The sky is beautiful. The clouds are out. The trees are out. And, you know, I wanted to do a lesson from last night. But, you know, coming out here, you know, Satan doing what he do. All of a sudden, you he, you know, you got somebody in the background, you know, uh, using a chainsaw, chopping down trees. I'm like, yo, now when I start the video, that's when the noise started happening. And I look back and I'm looking at him. I'm like, wow, that's Satan. But you know what? The word is still going to come to pass. And Lord willing, you brothers are, are edified. You know, um, it's just a, a quick video, you know, uh, 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 just based on, you know, a statement that I heard last night when I was watching uh, documentaries. And, you know, I watch a lot of documentaries and these documentaries may not be... Uh, based on history really um for the most part based on history but uh, a lot of the documentaries that i watch uh rec that that i have been watching recently have just been uh documentaries based on certain parts of the world okay uh certain parts of the world that the elite dwell in okay that they live in and that they partake in you know uh the, the luxuries the lifestyle that they're living so I, I tend to watch a lot of these videos and I don't watch these videos, you know, admi admiring Esau and his lifestyle, but just simply uh, getting some insight on how Esau is living and, and how he has been living since we've been in captivity. You know, and it's just because, you know, sometimes here in Babylon, we get so caught up in, you know, they, they, they only show us one thing, right? They show us what they want us to know and what they want us to think. But because they want you to think that, you know, this, what we're showing you, what we're giving you here, the rappers, the actors, the entertainers, this is luxury. This is wealth, which <laughs> the true wealth and true luxury that Esau is really enjoying is far from what they're showing you on television. Some of the richest people in the world, man. All these sounds, man. This is demonic, man. But it's still a beautiful day, and this lesson's still gonna come out. All right. Oh, uh, con. Well, yeah. So, you know, I just watched these documentaries to see, you know, how Esau is 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 is, is, is it, uh, how he's living in his kingdom and his wealth. You know, just interested. You know, but as you're watching these documentaries, they tend to go into uh, a lot of uh, historical events and how they uh, came about to establish. And the one constant that I've been noticing amongst all these documentaries is that Esau likes to start at a certain period, okay, within his documentaries. You know, and um. I was going to bring this out later in the video, uh, uh, bring out this statement later in the video, but I, I might as well bring it out now since I'm in the spirit. But it's a good question. Okay? I wanted to ask Esau, who were you prior before you being the Grecians? Please tell me that. Please explain that to us. Who were you prior to being the Grecians? Because you're not the original Greeks. Okay? Who are you? Who were you before that time? Because all of their history stems to, tends to start stem from that time period. Okay? Uh, because all their art reflects that time period. Okay? But who were you before the time of the Grecians? Because you're not the original Greeks. Okay? Because before Alexander ruled the land of Greece, Greece was already named Greece. So you couldn't be the original Grecians, okay? Because it said the father of Alexander came from Shittim, okay? That's a whole nother area, 
Okay, the 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 Medes were all the 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 true Greeks are the the Medes. Okay, which is Japheth. And you could tell that's their culture even to this day. All right? But going um going back to the topic and the reason of this video, I heard a statement and the statement that it was an owner of a private jet company, private jet liner. And the, the guy said that when they're, when they're buying or when they're using their private jets, they're not buying luxury. They're buying time. And to the untrained ear, to the untrained spirit, you would hear that and think nothing of it. But, but those of us who are in this truth, we hear something like that. And it is spiritual. It has a deeper meaning. Okay? Because we know, according to the scripture, Esau knows that he has but a short time. Even in states in Revelation, it states that uh, 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 Esau was loose. Actually, let me try to see if I can find it real quick. They were loose for a little season. Okay, they were loose for a little season, which means that they've had, they only have a short uh reign. Okay, they only have a short rulership. Okay, so when that, let me actually see if I can find it because that's not something that I had ready. Let me see. Slocky. Okay, but they only had a short season, and they knew they know that they only have a short season to rule. Okay, let me see. Uh, I won't spend too much time on it. Um, if I can't find it, I can't find it. I should have had it um, in line, but I wasn't thinking about it at that moment. Uh. As it was for a little season, uh, man, but Salak, yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to waste too much time. I didn't want to make this video too long. I'm already made, I've already made it too long, but yeah, they've been loose for a little season. So when he said that, that, and it, 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 a lot of things came to mind as far as like Esau knowing that he has, but a short time he's coming down with great wrath and his great wrath didn't, didn't just start at this time that we're in today okay at the end of babylon okay their great wrath actually actually started when they uh after uh the renaissance okay because going back to what i said earlier a lot of these documentaries they tend to start at a certain every place where esau dwells today they always go back to a certain point of a renaissance no matter where russia okay italy spain all throughout Europe, there's always an uh, 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 emphasis, uh, emphasis within their histories, a point, uh, uh, a point of, uh, they emphasize a point of renaissance, which means it lets you know that there was a rebirth, and that should qu have most people questioning, okay, okay, what do they need a, re a renaissance for, what do they need a rebirth for, but because according to history and according to the scriptures, we know we filter history through the scriptures that it was Jake that was ruling in all those lands. And we can tell that by even in the writings of Paul. OK, the, the, the places Paul went to. OK, Corinth, Rome. OK, all these places, uh, Galatia, all these places that uh, Paul went to, Jake was scattered within those cities. Okay, but but during that time period that Paul went into these cities, uh, 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 Esau was in control. Esau was in rulership. But pr uh, prior, and if and even after the the, the pagan Roman Empire, uh, uh, Jake controlled those regions. Okay, until the time, I believe, starting uh, 1300s, if I'm not mistaken, which would be 14. The 14th century or the 15th century, okay, that's when uh, Esau, that's when we started to go down and Esau started to go back up, 
okay, started to come back up. And that was the point of their renaissance. That's, that's where they started at. A lot of their history and a lot of these locations start from that point of time. They never want to go back even further. So I'm like, okay, well, this is how you know Esau has been lying to us this whole time. Okay, because if they claim to be the greatest people throughout history and they've always controlled these regions, why do you need a rebirth? And why aren't you further along in wealth and wisdom in the world if you've been on top this whole time? Okay, so Esau have been teaching us lies, but um, I wanted to go into Wisdom of Solomon, all right, because they know that they have but a short time, man. Okay, and they knew that from the time they uh from the time they came out of the uh uh when they came out of the pit. Okay, when they came out of the pit and they started the Renaissance, okay, and they started iconoclasm throughout Europe, they knew that they had a short time. Not all of them, okay, but the elite understood that. They understood that they had to subdue Jacob. Okay, but all of these things are, are according to prophecy. Because Esau Esau had to, his blessing had to come to pass. Okay, and prophecy had to come to pass. We had to go into captivity. We had to fall away. Alright? But I'm just going to quickly breeze through Wisdom of Solomon. Because that statement was very deep to me. Okay? They're not buying... They're not... When they're renting, when they're buying and using these jets, they're not buying the luxury they're buying time because if you can be in south of Spain or south of France and, and you want to uh, go to Italy, you can go to Italy within like 90 minutes. You can be in Italy. OK, and in another 90 minutes or whatever, you can be somewhere else around the world. You can travel. You can go through. You can go to how many countries you can go to like three countries in one day. This is how Esau is living. This is how the elite of Esau is living. Okay, and it says, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 2, it says, For the ungodly said, said reasoning within, with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned to the grave. Okay, and it says, For we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been for the breath in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our hearts okay and it says which being extinguished our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air and our name shall be forgotten in time and no man shall have our works in remembrance and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud and shall be dispersed as in as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof for our time is a, is a very shadow that passeth away and after our end there is no returning okay for it is fast sealed so that no man cometh again come on thereafter let us enjoy good things that are present and let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wines and ointments and let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us take let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place for this is our portion and our lot in this okay and and this is the spirit that Esau has been in for quite some time okay and this is the spirit that they're in now okay but but the spirit that they're in currently with their with their with the coming of Jacob's trouble they're going to be in a spirit of vengeance and they're going to want to get rid of all of Jacob because they know Jacob, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. They know, the elites know that the covenant is with us. Okay, even though we're at the bottom. Okay, no matter, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere that we are, we're at the bottom. But still, but still we create culture. Okay, we, we create, we, we are inventors. Jacob is the former of all things. Okay, and one of one thing that I observe 
amongst Esau, the elite of Esau within these places, you know, south of France and south of Italy and these uh, uh, reserved places, these uh, secluded places. One thing Esau does, he places a lot of value in the ancient world. Okay, some of the most luxurious things Esau holds dear to himself, okay, are the things of the ancient world. Okay, and not only the 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 the, the carnal things, you know, not only you know the lands and and the food and stuff like that, but also the wisdom of the ancient world. Okay, this is why we know that the uh, Esau likes to hide in darkness. Okay, he doesn't. He likes to be hid. Okay, and he also likes to hide the truth. Okay, he likes to hide true wisdom. Okay, and he, and he covers the earth. The earth is covered in complete darkness, man. And the people gross darkness. And this is how Esau wants it. Okay, he doesn't want truth to reign. Okay, he gives everybody. He feeds lies to the whole world. Okay. He has the whole world thinking one way. Okay, he'll give you the modern stuff. He'll give you Burger King, McDonald's. He'll give you fast food. Okay, he'll give you those things that you think is, that you think is 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 convenient and luxury, while he's enjoying true luxury and understanding true wisdom. Okay, because everything that he values is of the past, is of the ancient world. Okay, what does that tell you? Okay, the world that he's created is a world of death and lies, and he has to keep that. He has to keep things this way in order to bring a false sense of uh, dominance, okay? Because, yeah, you're dominant in the world that you created, okay? In a, in a world that you dumbed down the whole population, okay? And the knowledge and the wisdom, the, the knowledge and understanding that you have is from the ancient world, okay? So that's the only way Esau could seem greater than everybody else and have more than everybody else, as he 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 controlled the world, that's a part of his blessing. The fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. Okay, but ultimately, at the end of his uh, uh, reign, he's gonna serve his brother. Okay, which is Jacob. Okay, but going back to the scriptures, it says, it says, uh, verse nine, wisdom of Solomon two, verse nine. It says, let none of us go without his part of voluptuousness. Okay, even from the time of the beginning. Okay, even the most high in a way, so like, I don't mean to be going off, but in a way, the most high made a covenant with Esau on the left hand side, going way back even to uh, the Garden of Eden. Okay, the serpent. Okay, boom. And from the serpent upon his belly shall he dwell, man, shall he live. And he was going to live by the sword and he shall eat up dust, confusion. Okay, and then going into Cain. Okay, actually. Well, let me see if I can bring that up. But going into Cain, where he said that he shall be a, 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 a vagabond oh, and a fugitive upon the earth. Isn't that Esau? Isn't he a vagabond and a fugitive upon the earth? Okay, he's a vagabond because every land that he's in is not his. All the cultures that he's uh, 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 assimilated to throughout the, the centuries are not his cultures. They're not his heritage. They're not his traditions. Okay, what Esau does as during the time of uh, the, the I'd say the Greek, I, I don't want to say the Greek Empire, because to be honest with you, that is uh, 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 it's not correct to even say that because they're not the original Greeks, but we're going to the Grecian Empire. Okay, as they were conquering, starting with Alexander the Great, Alexander, Alexander the Creep. They were taking on the the cultures of the of the nations that they were conquering, okay, and they brought it along with them. But we know through through history and we know through the scriptures that none of those cultures belong to them. Everything that they claim to 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 uh, everything that they hold dear to themselves and they that and 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 that they they value is not theirs. They're vagabonds, man. Okay, they're fugitives. Everywhere they go, they bring death. Everywhere they go, people want them out of their lands, okay? But going all the way down to uh, Esau, Esau was blessed with that sword, 
Okay? And they, they shall live by the sword. And they've been doing that this whole time. They've been living by the sword. And this is the only way they can enjoy their kingdom. Esau could never truly have happiness. No matter what they say in their documentaries, this is true happiness. This is not true happiness for you. Because you're totally against the creator. Okay? You're running against the clock. How could you be truly happy? But when Jacob receives the kingdom, we're going to have the kingdom. We're going to have an everlasting kingdom. We're going to be truly happy because we're going to know that the creator himself has given us these things. Okay? That's why... The scripture says that Israel shall dwell in safety alone. Okay, and none shall, none shall, uh, 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 what does it say? None shall, uh, 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 Salakia, none shall, uh, Salakia. Y'all brothers know what I'm talking about. But yeah, Khan. Okay, so they're not at peace. They're racing against the clock. This is why they rule with such a uh, 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 vengeance. Okay, they rule with the sword. OK, they they want to hoard everything. They 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 want to uh, keep all the good stuff for themselves. OK, they're never satisfied. OK, they want the best of the best. And they they in the elite is so greedy. They don't live by the law, statutes and commandments. They're so greedy. They'll they'll keep all the good stuff even from their own people. And they will let their own people live amongst the poor. OK, but when you when you read the law, statutes and commandments, and you read about the time of Solomon. Okay, during the time of Solomon within his kingdom. Okay, during those 40 years, uh, 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 silver was as stone. Everybody was rich. But this is not how Esau operates. Okay, and you can tell throughout history as well, uh, the, the, the kingdoms that Jacob ruled. Okay, and the lands that they ruled because we ruled if I'm not mistaken, by monarchy, by monarchy, okay, we had families, okay, you couldn't be a king if you wasn't a part of a certain lineage, but that's not, that's something that Esau tries to run away from, and he's been trying to run away from that way of living for years, now, today, they don't live by that anymore, and you can tell by the lands that they uh, took over, there was a shift, especially during the times of the Renaissance, Okay, there was a change in government during those times. Okay, this is how you know Esau never ruled those lands in the first place from the beginning. Because there will always be a change of government. It would go from a monarchy to a, 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 a democratic system where people are getting voted in. Okay, though that's, that's, a, that's something of, of Esau. That's something Esau likes to do. Okay. During the time of the Greeks and the Romans, this that's their culture. They don't they don't rule, they don't like to rule by monarchy. They don't like to do that. Even though you always have families amongst them who control things, but as far as their kings go, they vote them in. Okay, and that's not and, and that's how you can tell the, uh, uh, throughout history when they started to rule especially uh, 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 the Russians, okay? The czars were actually a monarchy, okay? Those were bloodlines, okay? And then there was a period of time where uh, that way of, uh, that government, that way of governing was overthrown, okay? And that was during the time where Esau finally conquered uh, Russia, okay? And then it became more of a democratic system. Okay, because the czars, the, the, the czars, those were jakes. Okay, but they don't tell you that and they don't promote that. Okay, but we know. Okay, through the spirit. All right. But um, yeah, man, they're voluptuousness, man. This is why they're so aggressive. This is why they rule by the sword. This is why they're thieves and they're murderers because they know they have but a short time. Okay, they don't have a lot of time. Let us let the, the scripture says right here. It says, let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they wither. OK, this is their this is their attitude. This is why they 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 uh, in a sense, they 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 uh, they're trying to they're trying to hoard up everything because they know they don't have a lot of time. They're trying to gain all this money and all this wealth and control everything because they know they don't have a lot of time. They're trying to enjoy it now. Their spirit knows it. When you're watching these documentaries and you're looking at Esau, 
within these uh, nice, well-preserved places, they don't fit. Okay? They don't fit. You can see it in their spirit. You can see it in the way that they look, the way that they dress, the way that they carry themselves. You can tell they're not used to this. This is not who they truly, truly are. But they're going to pretend. And they're going to be proud about it. Because they know in their spirit they're not, that's not the position that they're supposed to be in. All right? But um, let me go to Job 14. All right? And Job 14 is very uh, impactful as well. Because Job 14 says, Salakia, Job 14, verse 5. And it says, I'll, I'll start at 4. It says, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Okay, con. And we're noticing that. Okay? Everything that he has is of the world. Everything that he has and he appreciates once belonged to us. Okay? Esau is not the originator of anything. Okay? This is why they hold the past so dearly. This is why they value the past so dearly. Okay? Because they they, they, they don't have the ability to invent anything anymore. Because they've reached their point. They could they can't they can't no longer they can no longer recycle the things from the past anymore. Because prophecy is catching up with them. Okay, the Most High gave them bounds that they can't pass as far as a rulership goes and as far as wisdom. Because through this truth, man, through this word, we're starting to see the baseness of their wisdom. We're starting to see the end of their rulership. There's a cap to their way of thinking. Because we were in complete darkness this whole time. We didn't, we couldn't, we didn't understand we 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 didn't uh, we 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 just had no understanding. You know we were in darkness for so long, and we looked at them, we looked up to them as if they they knew everything. Which now we understand that they know little to nothing at all. It just it was a facade, it was a lie, it was a veil that they had over our eyes, because they wanted to enjoy their kingdom so much. Esau is an innovator in death, in killing. In wickedness, but never in righteousness, and never in bringing life, never creating new things, because the scripture says Jacob is the form of all things. Okay, wisdom dwells, has a resting place with Jacob, not the other nations. You know, basically, all in all, and I mentioned it before, Esau is living in a second-hand kingdom. His kingdom is a second-hand rulership. It's not really a true rulership. Because he's not the originator of anything. All the technology that they claim that they brought out and invented, they just reintroduced it to you. Because you're in darkness. Electricity, that's old. Air conditioning, that's old. All these things are old. They just repackage it and, and bring it back out to you. And now you look up to them like they're gods and they're leaders. Like they're, like they're the leaders of all the nations. Nah, man. They use a lot of craftiness, a lot of witchcraft, a lot of enchantments. You know? But um Khan and the other nations, they fought they fell right they fell right in line with Esau, man. And that's why they hate the whore. But it's their fault. They follow Esau into a trap. And they're gonna be mad with them after this. Let me bring it out. This is uh, Revelation 18. I'll just bring up this point. Revelation 18, verse 3. And it says, For all the nations, it says, For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies, man. So they used, they, they, they rode that horse right along with Esau, man. But the difference between Esau and the other nations is that the other nations, they actually held on to a lot of their traditions and cultures. And they tried to integrate a lot of modern and, and, and Esau's way within their, their, their countries. 
But you can tell in the other nations, even though they have wealth, you can see that they're, it's not new to them. Okay, especially Elam and Ishmael, you know, Ishmael. Okay, they have wealth, but you won't know it. All right? You can't see it. Outside of their homes, they live hood rich in a way. Outside of their homes look beat down and broken. But inside of their homes, they're like a five-star hotel. Because they don't value worldly things like Esau does. Because Esau has a short time. All right, but you know what? You know, the water, Yahweh Bashimah Shai, man. I'm just going to end this video off, man. I don't have a lot of time. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakar Kadash. I'd like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. I'd like to give salutations to the Akin preaching the gospel across the four corners of earth in truth and sincerity. Shalom, Akyam. Shalom.